In your browser, go to apachefriends.org. At the top of the page, click on the XAMPP icon. Scroll down on the download page and you'll find the four distributions for Linux, Windows, Mac OS and Solaris. And I'm going to use the Windows distribution, so click on that. And again, you have to scroll down to find the Downloads section. Out of the various options, click on Installer. Now you'll see that this is a 91 megabyte download, so it's a very large download. You'll redirect it to SourceForge, and the download should start automatically after a few seconds. Save the file on your hard disk in your downloads folder or wherever you want to keep it. Quite a large download, so I'm going to pause the video now until it reaches the end. Once the download's complete, open up the folder that you downloaded the installation file to and click on it. Click on Run. And if you're prompted by Windows User Account Control, you have to agree to let it run the program. On my system, it's deactivated. On yours, the screen may blank out in the background. You have to agree, otherwise, obviously, it won't install. So click OK. Click Next at the welcome screen. When you're prompted to choose the installation location, leave the destination folder exactly as it is, as C colon backslash exam. And click Next. Under the exam options screen, in the service section part of the screen, there are three options to install Apache as a service, MySQL as a service, and FileZilla as a service. Installing these as a service means that they'll start automatically when Windows starts. We're not going to be using FileZilla for this project, but we will be using both Apache and MySQL very frequently. So check the first two of those boxes to install Apache and MySQL as Windows services. And then click on Install. The installation process really takes quite a long time, so I'm going to pause the video again and restart it when it's nearing completion. The installation's reaching the end now, and you'll be confronted with a series of command windows. None of these require any action on your part, they're just information about the installation. At the end of the wizard, click Finish. You get messages about um, checking the ports, and again, no actions required. Now, somewhere at this stage, if you haven't had XAMPP installed before, you will probably get a message from your firewall, from Windows Firewall or whatever firewall you're running, asking you whether to keep blocking or unblock. And you have to choose Unblock to let Apache run. In my case, it's slightly different because I had it installed before and my firewall was already unblocked. It reports that Apache and MySQL have started, and then a dialog box pops up saying, Service installation finished, hint, use the, also use the control panel. So you click OK on that. It asks you whether you want to use the control panel, and you click Yes. It says the installation was successful, start the control panel now, and you click Yes. Choose your language. Later there's a wider range of languages. And here in the control panel you can see that Apache and MySQL are in green backgrounds. That means that they're both running, and also to the right under Actions it says Stop, meaning that they're running. So that's fine, everything's worked properly. Click on Quit. 
go to your browser and type in the address of the local web server, which is just localhost. And it'll take you to this XAMPP splash screen. If you see this, that's fine. XAMPP's installed and it's running. Click on your language. And that's fine. This is the XAMPP um, tools page. Various useful tools that we'll look at briefly in the next video. Don't let it scare you that it's German in the middle. That's just an image. Everything is set up in English. And at the top, you can see that there's a range of other languages that you can choose. So now your computer is fully functioning as a local web server, and we can use it to build dynamic websites.